Today we're going to cover a visual that does a couple of things very well. Uh, do you, for instance, want to see milestones on top of your visual uh, apart from the Gantt uh, bars? Or do you want to see variants compared to the baseline? Uh, or do you want to have swimming lanes inside your visual? Today we're going to cover the track plan timeline visual. It's a custom visual in Power BI and let's have a look. So the track plan timeline visual, just like any Gantt chart visual, basically only needs a couple of values. So you have your project name, your task name, your start and finish. Uh, but there is options to do additional things such as uh, including baselines, including uh, if a milestone is critical or not, or maybe the types of tasks. Uh, you could even include a program value. In this example, I'm using a simple Excel extract from a random project environment. So in my example, I'm just mimicking a random project environment uh, and you can use either project for the web, project online, a Microsoft project file even. Basically the source does not matter as long as you have a project name, a task name and a start and finish and you can start working with the track plan visual. Here is the source data by the way, you can get the source data if you sign up to the newsletter. Uh, but let's have a look at the start of the track plan timeline. I have my project, I have my task, I have a start and a finish date, and that's all I need to get started with the timeline visual. So here's the data. Down below I have TP, track plan, timeline. And if I select the table, I can click on the track plan value, and it automatically already starts to populate things <laughs> completely incorrect of course because the task name is not the start date. I'm going to push that up here and we start seeing data enter the timeline visual nicely. So here we go. All right so what do we see out of the box as soon as we start working with the timeline visual? We see milestones, uh, we see tasks, we see which projects they're a part of. I don't think that this is as we intend to use it because it's a mishmash of different tasks. So let's clean that up a little bit and let's talk about those big tasks that we saw earlier. Uh, these texts are hidden. This might be the biggest downside of the track plan timeline visual. Um, it's a custom visual, so it's created not by the Microsoft people themselves, uh, but by an organization that, that needs to make some money as well. So they have a license structure where they hide texts from, uh, from the values uh, as, as long as you don't have a license. Now I've published this report as well, and online it doesn't look prettier. Uh, it doesn't look worse, there's no watermark, but the text is still hidden and it randomizes which text is hidden actually. So what do we need to do? We want to clean this up just a little bit um, where there needs to be a outline for the different projects. So what I have in my data, I have the different types of tasks. So I have a task type and in the task type I also have my project summary and I want to exclude that data so that project one doesn't show up in here. This looks a lot better. And now I want to differentiate between the different projects because this is all of the projects that we see here. So in order to do that, I find my project name, which is in the project table, of course, and I find this section that's called swimming lanes. And with swimming lanes, I get an introduction to the settings page of the track plan timeline. Um, currently, I'm just using the swimming lane and we'll come back to the swimming lane to mirror project hierarchy in just a moment. But let's have a look. Use swimming lanes by grouping data. And here we see our first project. Lovely. 
So let's dive into some of the specific things that I like about the track plan timeline. One of them is already on screen where I have the milestones on top of the project. That's lovely, right? And I can even choose, going by the settings, going to the layout, I can even choose to only show milestones which is of course also a very powerful way of visualizing your data. And if you have a licensed version of the product, I can imagine that this is a very nice visual for your uh, project milestones. Now let's return to another view of the uh, layout. So we have drawing layout schema or theme, uh, and we have the Gantt milestones and bars, milestones above bars, milestones only, uh, milestones as phases. I don't typically think this is a good idea, but that's personal maybe. Then there's a waterfall which mimics the Gantt where every line has its own um, own row or every, every entity such as a milestone, a task or a summary has its own line. Uh, but in waterfall, it tries to compact that a little bit more. So let's look at the Gantt view. And here we see that very nicely reflected. Let's take a look at the track plan timeline where I uh, include the WBS. So the WBS needs to be a text structure in your data because otherwise it won't find the dots inside your uh, WBS and it won't know how to populate your data. So let's pick the WBS and it needs to be the latest thing inside that swimming lane. And now you see that because it has that structure of 1.4.3, it has the option to create swimming lanes to mirror the project hierarchy. Um, you can even choose to what level you want that hierarchy to be shown. So for me, I have two levels because I have a subtask uh, or a sub summary as well. But if you're only interested in uh, the top level of your summary tasks, then having that on uh, the first grouping is enough for you. So let's see. And here we have that nice swimming lane, as they call it, where you have your phase, your phase two, your phase three. Um, time wise, Track plan has a little bit of an issue where the phases uh, show up uh, not in front of the first task within that phase. So there is something that might need to be triggered, uh, might need to be changed. But I can probably remove the summary. No, because then it doesn't know uh, the values uh, from the WBS because the summaries are, of course, part of that WBS structure. And I do need to visualize them. So let's close this off a little bit. But this looks lovely, right? You have your phases, you have your structure. Um, now, are you ready for it? the thing that I thought was unique to track plan timeline. And what I really like is the option to create a variance or to show a variance inside the visual. So there is this comparison finish date. Very interesting. And we want to compare the current finish date or the, the scheduled finish date or planned finish date. And you want to reference the baseline finish. Now, in order for this to work, you of course need to have that baseline uh, set up in your system. But if you do, you can scroll down and click that. And you see that it automatically opens up that settings page in order for you to uh, reflect if this is the way track plan needs to visualize this comparison settings looks lovely show movement lines yes we do want to show those movement lines and here you see that that looks great right it shows you that there's a little bit of lag and if we move down a bit to text that actually is showing here, you see that we have an issue. And currently 
everything is red because everything is running behind but there is also an option to show um, green values for where you are ahead of your baseline very nice and powerful little feature within the track plan timeline i really enjoyed this then there's of course other things that you can add such as the percent complete and if a project task or any task a or milestone is completed it will show up gray it doesn't show a partial completion but that is uh, of course uh, not a really big issue I would say now I didn't use the rename during my tests but there are two but there are three things that I really need to show you and that is the bar color tags uh, the bar color uh, the milestone color and the milestone shape so let's take a look at the uh, task is critical value so task is critical if it's on the critical path it needs to show a different color so let's do that right now bar color tags and as we expected we have that settings page again and if it is not critical i can start using just a simple blue i'll make it a little bit more bluish i might want to increase the size of the page here a bit so i want to have this you can use the hex decimal uh, uh, to find your perfect color uh, but let's uh speed this up a little bit and choose this red and if i move out of the page i can see these red bars are in the critical path so they need to be taken account of so that looks great so that is just a first thing that you can do when it comes to coloring your visuals but because this is only a yes and no value there's a limit set of values that i can show right it's either blue or it's red you can choose multiple values here you can choose different types of uh, values mm -hmm. so let's take a look at the milestone colors as well where I can um, where I can select the type of project to reflect the milestone so I have either IT projects or I have marketing projects so I can choose a different color for different sections of my organization so I have an IT which is green and then I have purple for marketing and if I navigate through I can see that that turns green that turns green and down below I have purple milestones as well now that might not be the best way to reflect a type of project how would we do that normally well we can go all the way up and above the swimming lane project I can start adding the type as well so I navigate to type and I have that swimming lane still set up correctly and now I can see that this is an IT project and this is an IT project as well and down below marketing is the third project now did you see that the uh, phases are missing here that might be because we need to add that extra line here so we have the second layer and we can also drill down all the way to the third layer and if you have multiple layers uh, uh, below that we can also surface those very nice little feature and probably the correct way to distinguish the type of project just pushing it before instead of the type of project you could also use the program or the portfolio in which these projects reside very good now let's have a look at that last thing the milestone shape you can change the shape of the milestone based on its content let's take that task is critical again and move that over to the milestone shape and here you have that diamond a flat diamond which is the basic of a milestone and we can change that to a star if it is a critical milestone 
And you can, of course, change this to multiple values where you might distinguish a uh, decision point or a key milestone or a gate review or anything like that. If that's in the data, you can use that to uh, change the shape of your milestone. And on top, you see your stars, you see, you see your diamonds and different colors as well. So that is nicely reflected in the data. Now, as you can imagine, there is more to be explored with the a track plan timeline. Um, there's a settings menu that has a couple of tabs, six in total. So there is things to explore. I don't have time for that in this video. If you want to have a follow up, just let me know in the comments below. I enjoyed making this video a lot. I think track plan timeline is a powerful tool and it becomes even better if you license that product. Uh, Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like this video. Give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.